Hi, I'm Lindsay Levitt, author of the Tween Princess for Hire series and uh, the young adult novel Chandra's Wild's Head. And today I'm going to be talking to you about the debut year. Dun, dun, dun. And I chose to talk to you about the debut year dun, 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 because uh, I just recently debuted last year. And something I've learned as an author, if, if you are taking notes, write this down now is uh, really, I don't know, Jack. I mean, I, I know Jack, I have a nephew named Jack, but what's another word for it? I don't know anything. And every day I was business, I learned something new about being an author, I learned something new about my books, and that's kind of crazy, it's kind of awesome, and it's kind of wonderful, all wrapped into one big ball of writerly angst. So uh, don't take this to mean that I'm an expert talking about this. It's just something that's still very fresh for me. And so I uh, now share my experiences with you. Now, there's a transition that you need to take from being a pre-published writer to being a published writer. And that transitioning into authordom. I don't really think there's a guidebook on the emotions that you're going to go through and the experiences you're going to have. Okay, maybe there is a guidebook and it's probably really informational, but we're already here, so let's just follow along, okay? Um, when you've worked on this story for so long, you've imagined that moment, maybe where you'll be when you get the call. And you've imagined what that's like to be an author and to walk into a store and there... Oh, wait, sorry. Wait. What? Those are my books on the shelf. Woo! Um, what is that going to feel like? And it's kind of like when you're planning... Uh, wedding. You plan out every minute detail of the actual wedding, but then after you, there's a wedding, there's this whole thing called marriage that follows, and maybe you don't plan that out as much. And uh, that's the same thing as once you become an author, what does that mean for you after? And so inevitably, uh, you know, you'll get the call, you'll be euphoric, and you'll feel like a fluttery bird in the sky, and then you'll have a moment where you crash. And everybody has a time, a different time, when they crash, but I think it is pretty common, uh, whether that be the waiting afterwards. If you have a really long lead time, sometimes you might hear from your editor right when you get the call, and then you won't hear from your editor for months and months until you get the revision letter, and you can start to wonder, you know, is anyone out there? Um, does anyone care about me still? Uh, maybe you have a really fast lead time and you don't have time to think about what's happening and then you get these revisions and they're really hard and you have deadlines for the first time. So uh, I think a lot of authors feel like they can't share that crash feeling after because they don't want to discredit the wonderful thing that's happened. So <laughs> solidarity? Uh, it does happen. It is very common. I've talked to many authors that have experienced it in some way or the other, and uh, it does eventually go away. And then we come to revisions. And everyone has different experiences with their revisions. I would like to reenact mine for you because it was so wonderful of an experience. I just have to share it. So, okay. I open up the computer and I click and look and there's a lot of pages from my editor of things she wants me to change. And I scroll down and I scroll down and I scroll down 12 pages and the one solitary tear rolls down my cheek and I think, oh my gosh, my editor hates me. She hates me. She hates this book. I don't know why she ever bought this book. She wants me to rewrite the ending. The ending is the whole point of the book. If I take away the ending, I will have a pointless story. And then people will say, hey, what's your story about? And I'll be like, I don't know, there's no point because my editor took it from me. And I'm going to have to fight her on this. I'm going to have to call my agent. I'm going to have to cry. I'm going to have to call all my writing friends because <sighs> what's happening? What's happening to my book? What's happening to me? This isn't what this is supposed to be. Now, and you'll go through this, you know. Um, maybe you start at a more uh, mature place than I did. 
but eventually you hope to get to the uh, opposite feeling where you realize your editor is a goddess. Your editor is what takes your book from good to great. Your editor only has your best interest in mind. Well, usually has your best interest in mind. Um, my editor had my best interest in mind. I didn't pause to change that. Sorry. Hey, love you guys. Um, but really, you have the same goal, and usually your editor is right. Your ending probably was weak, and you probably didn't have a point in the story. And that's why they're there, to help you to get through that. So don't also compare and think that just because you had the 12-page revision letter from um, that fiery place below ground, that you aren't a good writer. Everyone has a different editorial process that they go through, especially with a debut book, because... Honestly, with my debut book, I still didn't know what I was doing. I had to learn a lot about writing, and that happened through the revision process, and I'm really, really grateful for it. And then we go back up after revisions because you've finished a book, and you get the arcs in the mail, and it's this finished thing that you've created, and it is your thoughts, and it is your words, and it was good. Until it's not good. Until you get Sybil, and you start to think, oh, the people. The people, the people will read it, the people are going to say things, the people will think things, it will not be the things that I wanted to think, and you start to get reviews. And I think this is probably the biggest point of crazy that debut authors experience. And I'm not going to lie to you and say that I was super zen and didn't review or read my reviews or Google myself or... Um, put screens and have other people Google myself to save me and that I can live in the land of magical fairy dancing happy reviews because um, all those things happen but I think it is important to read your reviews at least read a bad review and read a good review and kind of get that experience get it out of your system um, recognize that there are going to be opinions that you have no control over and I don't really know any other way besides just reading those reviews. If you are one of those people that never reads a review, more power to you. Um, but I was not one of those people. And I think it's okay. I think it's kind of the cool thing to say that you don't. But a lot of us do, and especially professional reviews. And I had some really uh, bad reviews, and I had some really good reviews. And I think the number one counterbalance for me with reviews was reader email. Uh, because if someone took the time to tell me that they love my book that much and to tell me how that book impacted them, uh, you know, one email like that is worth, you know, 20 reviews, good or bad. Now, another part that comes with this is the sweet and the sour of being published. There are things you don't think about when you're writing a book because you're largely dominated by that one question, will I ever be published? Once that's answered and that answer is a yes, you realize that published might not be what you imagined. Uh, things happen that no one ever told you about. You might even fail. And I hate to use that word because really if you're published, if you finish that book, if you got a publisher on board and it is something tangible that you created, you're never a failure. I mean, that is a physical manifestation of success, but you can feel like a failure at lots of different times. And it's because of these things that happen that no one ever told you about. Um, things like books get canceled, or chains skip you, or you get an awful cover, or there's no in-house support, or the expectations are too large and you are very, very far from earning out your advance. Uh, editors leave, your genre dies before your book even comes out, the economy crashes, your reviews are awful, your publisher doesn't want to publish your next book, and, and the list goes on and on and on. I think you have to know, and maybe logically you don't know this for a while, but oftentimes that failure really has nothing to do with you. For control freaks, that's really a mad thing to say because you want to be able to control that, you want comfort in knowing that you can change things, but it's also comforting to know that really it's not you, it's usually them. I don't know who them is, I don't want to incriminate myself. Um, you did your thing, you, you wrote a book, so you take some responsibility for selling that book, but at the end of the day you can't take it personally. Please don't take it personal. The success of one book is not a direct reflection of of your ability as an author or your worth as a human.
And as a debut author, the biggest advice I can give is to know you are not your book. To separate your worth as a person, your worth as a writer, from the value the market puts on it. Oh, marketing. The best part of debuting is learning that you do not just have to write a book, you now have to sell a book. And selling and writing are kind of two different parts of the brain, and for some of us, it's a really hard thing to do. The best thing that I learned was from Lisa Schroeder, did a blog post that you can Google, and she broke it down, 12 years up to your debut each month, here's things that you can be doing. And whatever point you're at, if you haven't done that yet, if you're six months, if you're post debut and you have 12 months after, create a game plan for yourself. This is separate than the marketing plan that you may or may not get from your publisher. Create your own marketing plan. And when you're doing that marketing plan, make it realistic. Just put one or two things each month that you want to do. If you do not like to vlog, do not put vlogging on there. If you are going to join a new group and have to blog every day, then don't go and put that you're going to do 20 school visits on top of that. Figure out what you're comfortable with. Figure out something you actually enjoy doing because there will be parts of it that you enjoy doing and do those things. Uh, don't beat yourself up because there will be other people that will have more marketing money put into their books. There will be other people who have more energy than you. Figure out what you enjoy, put it on your plan, follow it month by month, and just chunk it up so it's not too overwhelming. Um, also, dude, have a release party or do something on the day that your book comes out, uh, whether that's getting a pedicure or having a party with your thousand closest friends. Uh, it's a big deal. You're a big deal. You're a big deal. And celebrate that, please, for me. and Invite me if you do something, too. Uh, don't lose sight when all that craziness happens of debut. Do not lose sight of this accomplishment. I'm getting mad with you here. Don't do it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. It's a wonderful thing. Okay, I'm long-winded, so let me just end with a couple quick more things of advice. While you're going through all of these things with the debut year, uh, make sure that you find a network of friends to go through this with you. I thought it was really valuable. I was in the group, the tenors, and that was super helpful because I made a lot of friends in the tenors that I can write and say, hey, I have this cover. What should I do? Do you like it? Do you not? Uh, what What are your revisions like? And just each step of the process to share that. It was also very helpful to have friends who were much further in the process who already had books published because pretty much they always just told me to chill and they always would just say, you'll learn after your debut. It's really not that big of a deal. And um, then I would kind of get annoyed with them and, and now I like them a lot more. But it did help me to stay grounded too. Um, also, write your next book and whether that is by choice uh, because you are uncontracted or contracted, get on it, write it. That can actually be the most angsty thing because you may have deadlines for the next book while you're trying to promote this book. Find a balance between the two. Remember, writing always comes first. You are a writer before you're a, a blogger or a networker, and it's okay to let those things slide. And remember, no matter uh, what happens with this book, what happens with your next book, what happens in your author career, you are a big deal. This, what you've accomplished is such an amazing thing and still take moments when uh, you start to think of all the crazy things that happen along the way. Don't forget that person that you were when you were querying and you just wanted that book on the shelf because even though things happen that are beyond your control at the end of the day, that is such a wonderful thing. You did it. You're awesome and you have a book. You debuted. Congratulations and uh, yay you. That's the worst ending ever. See, I'm not good at endings. Edit me, someone, please.